Okay, let's see here. Who do we have? There's Chris. Uh, Brianna, brand new. Hey, so welcome aboard, Brianna. It's good to see you. Uh, I'm going to promote you. I'm going to promote everybody, actually. So, Jeff, good to see you, buddy. Uh, by the way, for those of you logging in now, we're, we're, uh, uh, we're informal right now, so at ease. You can just relax. Okay, uh, let's see. Benny, I just promoted you. So, Benny, hang on one second. I'm also going to make you a co-host. Hang on one second. Okay, so, Benny, you're, you're a co-host now, all right? Uh, good Here. to see you. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Yep. I got a little bit of housekeeping to do here. I've got to promote people to panelists. Um, Betty, good to see you. Same here. Colin, good to see you too. Uh, Deb, good to see you. Brand speaking. Hey, Deb, did you, hopefully I got to your question in time today. I, I'm guessing you were doing the online application. <clears throat> um, so let me know, Deb, if you still need help with that. Um, Kai, good to see you, buddy. Jason, good to see you. Uh, let's see, Jeff, I think I said hi, but I'll say it again, Jeff Allen. Uh, John Giggy, good to see you, buddy. Liz, good to see you too. I'm glad you're connecting with Gina. Uh, let's see, so, Luann, good to see you, Luann. Uh, if you guys, if, feel free to, to chat while you're waiting for me to get through all this. So we'll be starting here in just a minute. Um, Chris, good to see you. Hey, Chris, I'll, I'll send you a um, about some interaction today. Um, let's see. Who else? Uh, another brand new agent. Shirley, good to see you, too. Uh, Susan, good to see you. Welcome aboard. Uh, Teresa, good to see you, too. Have you noticed I haven't said that once to one person, it's not good to see you? <laughs> We'll see who's paying attention. <laughs> see if I can get some, uh, gets my dry Irish English Scottish humor. Tom, good to see you, buddy. Tom, thanks again for coming last Thursday to Grammy's 83rd birthday party. It was a, that was a nice surprise, and I know she appreciated it. You know, in fact, I hadn't seen her that perked up and smiling in, in quite a while. So, thanks for doing that. Um, Okay, let's see. I think that's all attendees. We got all the panelists on. Um, let's see. All right. So we are live. We're recording, and we're also on Facebook. Uh, we're not quite ready to start. So just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we've got it. We've got a number of folks who recently are joining the team. <coughs> One of them's so brand new, she still shines. So Bri uh, Brianna, welcome aboard. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, from a uh, good old fashioned Nashville. Good to see you. Um, and we have a special guest, uh, Benny Ulo on. He's a private collusion client of mine and um, friend. And uh, been, so Benny, we were introduced to us back in October, I think. And then uh, we started coaching in November. And Benny's working guys with uh, one of my oldest agents from the brokerage company, Win Realty Advisors. Um, this goes back probably, I think that was 13 years ago, I launched that business. And uh, she's going to be on here in a second. And Benny is her client. So just to kind of describe this to you, I wanted, what, what I wanted you to see was a real honest to goodness investor agent relationship uh, playing out right in front of you. Okay. So Christine's been at it quite a while. She's very good at what she does. And Benny's also having a lot of success. He's a, he's a sharp businessman. And uh, I'll let him tell more about his story, but he already has, you know, probably 20 or so properties and we're working on a, a quite large project right now. Uh, so we've moved up from the singles and duplexes to the bigger stuff. And so I thought this was a good time to have Benny and Chris on so you guys can see the, see how they interact with each other, we'll ask them questions about what roles they play. Okay. And it should be a real eye opener for you and also a real good indicator of how well you can do in this business. So I think last check, Christina had like something like, I don't know, 14 active transactions and I think seven listings. Um, and she's doing it solo. So uh, uh, it just pays to 
be persistent and consistent. So let me see. Um, well, I've got some more people to promote here. So hang on one second, guys. Let me take care of that. Uh, let's see. Attendees, uh, Steve, good to see you, buddy. Um, Gina, good to see you. All right. Greg Covington. Hey, Greg, did you get the, the painting done? I think it was that Saturday I called you or Friday? I can't remember what day it was I called you. Um, but uh, hopefully uh, if you got that that job taken care of. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, hey, Gary, you went I lost that? I lost you, so I didn't hear your question. I was just asking if you finished the <laughs> painting job this weekend. The Buffini? No, the, the painting. Painting the, I think you were doing oh, that. Yes, yeah. Uh, well, I didn't finish, but I got done what I want. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm going back home and do another bathroom tonight. Okay, good. So, guys, what, what Greg's doing is he's selling his own home. I'm sorry, no, he's keeping his own home as a rental and moving into a new home. And I always tell people, you know, if there's, when I look back at my, all my years of investing, 35 years, <clears throat> I don't have any regrets on any of the properties I bought. I have regrets on the properties I sold, and I should have kept every last one of them, you know? And uh, so Greg's smart by keeping keeping that one. <laughs> Excuse me. Hey guys, let me check here. I just got a text message. I think that was from Christine. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, looks like she's logging in now. So hang on one second. And I'm going to promote. Oh, there she is. Okay. So, Christine, I just promoted you to panelist. And I'm going to make you a co host, too. So, hang on one second in case there's any uh, anything to share, like on a slide or something. So, okay. All right, guys. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get this, uh, get this party started. So, tonight, uh, like I mentioned before, I got uh, Christine and Benny on. Christine is the agent in the relationship. Benny is the client and the investor. Uh, there are several projects that they've worked on. Uh, uh, hang on a second. I just got a better message. Um, every, everything's fine. Everything's good in the hood. Uh, that's a secret message to my texture. So in any case, um, uh, so they've done, I think, many, I think maybe 14 deals together in the last year. You and Christine, is that sound about right? Something like that, yeah. Hi, everyone. How you doing? Yeah. So, everybody, if you could give a warm welcome to, to Benny. Benny's going to share some stuff with you tonight. All right. And then, Christine, you can you, uh, you can hear Christine. You can't see her. That's okay. Um, she's going to share some stuff with us also. So, hi, Christine. Hi, Gary. <laughs> hi, everyone. Hello. So, what I thought I would do first is this. So Benny, if I could have you give a little, just a little bit of a background on how you got started in this and what you're, you know, like we all, a lot of people I tell them, you should have a business and you should have real estate investors and the two should go hand in hand and work together. So if you wouldn't mind, Benny, just kind of um, paint a picture for us a little bit on, on who you are, you know? Sounds good. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Benny Uyoa. I uh, live in Pittsburgh. Um, and uh, I, uh, I've been in the restaurant business for a, a, a number of years. Uh, we own some restaurants here in Pittsburgh, Mexican restaurants. And um, I, uh, at some point I wanted to start di uh, diversifying uh, investments into uh, another type of avenue that would uh, eventually, where, where I would eventually be able to, are you guys there? Yep. Yeah. I will see you. Oh man, what happened here? One second. Yeah. We can we can see you and hear you. Okay. So you yeah. do, I don't see you anymore. What That's okay. Here? So let me just see here. Well, I'm not sure what this thing did. I didn't I didn't touch it, so <laughs> What's okay? if you were if you were to continue, we actually can see you see you. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I just wanted to start uh, you know, um, investing in other other types of uh, things. Uh, real estate, of course, uh, uh, made sense, and uh, you know, I just started uh, to to. I wanted to start start small. So um, um, actually, Christina, uh, I met Christine several years ago. Um, what would you say, Christine? Five, seven years ago? Five years, maybe? 
five, six years, something like that. And at that time, we um, uh, we we did not we did not uh, do uh, we didn't work together at the time. I, I didn't I wasn't sold on real estate at the time, and um, so I, I I ended up not doing anything uh, for a while. She she kept uh, you know she she stayed uh, in touch with me and um, and uh, and you know eventually was able to drag me out to be able to to go look at a couple of. Uh, <laughs> And um, but, but that's a little bit later on. The, the, the thing is that the, the restaurant thing, that's what I was doing. And I wanted to diversify my investments and I wanted to uh, eventually create another um, uh, avenue of uh, passive income and maybe um, find a way to uh, lower my tax exposure for my earned income through depreciation in real estate. So, uh, and that's something that I, it's, it's a long-term play and that's, uh, that's that's been a, one of our goals with my CPA. So um, uh, so that's something that I, you know that's how I ended up uh, doing real estate. Um, and then what I was saying earlier that uh, at the first uh, we didn't we didn't I wasn't ready to start uh, to get involved in real estate um, uh, until eventually she showed me some uh, some investments that would have made sense real estate wise. Where you know how much some of these uh, houses she was showing me uh, could uh, be. Uh, Purchased for the rehab, the um, ARVs, and uh, in you know she did it. I guess enough that I convinced me at one point, and then I started to to purchase um, houses. So, um, Christine, do you want to take over for a second? Let me try and get let, let me try and see if I can get back on this. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure what happened, but I, I can't see you guys, and I want to yeah. see you guys. One sec. That sounds good. And Christine, before you start, I just want to. Do a, like a little um, inter, inter, not an intervention, interference, but a, a interlude. So um, it's interesting to get Benny's perspective, the investor's perspective. So now we're going to get the agent's perspective. And I see she's smiling. So there's probably a couple of things that she, she wants to bring up. So the guys, just want to tell you, this is going to be an interesting uh, class. And probably because I know both of these folks very well. All right. Um, and I, I already know their dynamics of the relationship. And uh, so it's going to be interesting to get their perspectives. But then we're going to talk about some of the properties, right? Maybe a, one of the flips, maybe one of the rentals. And you can see what they did, how it worked out. And you can see Benny's doing extremely well with the investing and in what we're doing now as far as this bigger project. So in any case, uh, Christine, thanks for doing this. I, I, I know you're, you're working like a maniac. And I appreciate you taking your time with this. I know you're busy. I know we're... Very lucky to have you on board. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I would just uh, like to add that that I have known Benny for about eight years, and actually, I I, I think I met um, well, I met Gary eleven uh, ten years ago, eleven years ago, and I was one of his students, and then I I worked for him at, at um, Win Realty, and mm -hmm. then you know I moved on to uh, a, a different. Actually, he paired me up with another agent. I was a junior agent at the time, and he paired me up with another more experienced agent. And she was recruited away, so that's why I, I left Gary. And then, um, you know, I, I, but I've always used a lot of what Gary used, I mean, to, to this day, I think has built, built the foundation, having investor relations, investor customers, clients, is definitely... Uh, a huge part of my business but getting back to Benny when I first met Benny I was still kind of new and didn't really know a lot I just knew enough to be dangerous but I wasn't as prepared probably the first time that I saw Benny you know I was just learning and just kind of winging it you know learning as I go and I think that he and I connected you know <laughs> professional way but we didn't connect as where we clicked in our relationship. I think he could tell that I wasn't exactly, you know, confident maybe, but I just stayed with him and I kept talking to him and I just reassured him that I wanted his business and I was willing to learn. And I promised him that I was going to make him money. So finally, a few years later, when he and I reconnected, I was a lot more confident and I had some experience under my belt. And it, you know, we went out several times and looked at properties and he just was a little bit hesitant to pull the trigger. You know, he was just, 
you know, kind of started or afraid to get started. And finally I said, look, let's just try one. Let's try a little one. You know, I don't think you're going to get hurt here. You're going to make all the money, all your money back after the ARV with the repair. You know, I, I really felt confident about, about it. And I just convinced him to try one. And then, I don't know, I guess we did two or three projects that, that year. And, uh, and then another couple the following year and the last two years, I mean, I'll tell you what, he has not been able to stop. He sends me properties every day. <laughs> he, he's just so excited. He's got the real estate bug. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, good. Yeah, so um, um, like uh, Christine said, uh, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. and what will say is, if you notice, guys, um, early on when Benny first started speaking, it was comical because I was laughing. He said he, Christine dragged him out to go look at properties. And then later on, Benny just, Christine just said that Benny was sending her bunches of properties that he wanted to look at. I Everybody, remember. Make sure you write that down. There's some golden nuggets of wisdom in there. Okay. I remember that um, she, um, um, she, she explained to me several times, you know, she took me to several houses to look at uh, the potential, um, the, the, the potential that they had. And uh, I just didn't really, um, I wasn't sold on it. And it took a long time, meaning, I don't know if months, maybe, maybe year, maybe a year. Um, and I, but I, I just, I told her that if she was able to convince me that, uh, you know, if I were to turn on the real estate uh, switch on, that then she would have to hold on to 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 it because uh, I was gonna go uh, all in. Uh, eventually, uh, um, which one do we do first? I just I think we talked about you know how much money I will be investing to the first house and how much rent it could be uh, bringing in, and that's how she sold me on it. Um, and I think that first summer was that a the summer of 2019, Christine? I think it was right. I think that summer we bought three properties. No, I, I have, um, I just did that spreadsheet for you last night and the first property was in 2016. So it's been five years. Okay, so we bought some of the houses for the, for the, for the restaurants. Correct. Yeah, but, but that was- that Basically we purchased, the reason you finally decided to do it was I explained that you had different exit strategies. You could buy and hold, you could flip. I mean, it, you had different ways of making money with each property. So the risk was low. Right, um, but I think it wasn't until 2019 when we really, uh, was it 2019? Yeah, 2019. I think we, we started with uh, the, th the three houses. Uh, and then a few months later, we bought another three or four. I don't know why they, it's been an increment of three. Uh, and um, yeah, and it's it went from, um, she sending me, uh, Christine sending me the properties to, you know, me uh, sending her a, a bunch of, uh, houses and properties that I would find when I was doing my own research. And that just, uh, the point of that is that, um, uh, I mean, uh, to that, uh, when, we, when, we, when we got to that point, we had that level of trust and I had that level of confidence in her to, to well, the trust, first of all, to be able to communicate with her uh, and, you know, uh, at uh, different hours of the day. Uh, and uh, I thank her for that because, you know, other people, you know, come 5 p.m., they're done. So uh, we, um, we would communicate in uh, later uh, later hours in the day, and um, um, I was I knew a little bit to be able to start searching my uh, my own uh, potential properties, and I would send them to her, and she would you know look at comps and look at rents, etc., depending on what we were looking for, and um, and you know we uh, I would say though that most of the houses that we deal that we ended up uh, buying were the properties that she brought to my attention, the ones that I. Uh, um, that I found, you know, they were, they seemed to be good deals. They were good deals, I thought. Uh, but uh, for some reason, I would say that probably two out of 10, uh, the houses, the houses that we now have, I would say that probably maybe one or two of the houses were the ones that I sent her as opposed to the deals that she brought me. So uh, she she did a lot better on that and finding those, uh, those better deals. Yeah, okay, now let's do this. Um, <clears throat> Can you think of, uh, uh, Christian, I'll start with you. Can you think of, let's talk about a flip first. 
maybe like the first slip you did or the last one or one that really sticks out in your mind is um, was a real winner. I think there was one you guys just did where the, the payoff was the payday was like 60,000. Is that right? About a month or so ago. So, yeah. so talk and take walk us through that, um, how you found it, what the offer, what the list price was, what the offer was, the rehab, and then the at the closing, what the net was, you know? Okay. Um, well, at the time we were looking, actually not necessarily for a flip, we were looking for buy and holds because um, we have, I had explained to Benny to start investing in a, in this area where there is a petrochemical company, Shell is coming into the area, um, into Beaver County. I live in Pennsylvania and they're bringing in, they're just uh, uh, constructing this major plant um, and it, they have 6,000 temporary workers and there's just not enough housing. I mean, I remember one year, you know, like overnight, five hotels just popped up in this neighborhood. And, and it's because of being able to handle all these temporary workers that need housing um, for the next five to seven years to build this major plant. So we were looking for uh, buy and hold rentals and the property that I found him, you know, had some good bones. It was listed for 58,000, I believe. And we purchased the property, I'm pulling up the spreadsheet for, I believe it was $52,500. And I believe Benny has put $30,000 into it. I mean, we, in every property that Benny purchases, his end game is to in, increase the, um, the value of the property. He wants to be able to get uh, it, it to appraise so that he can take all the money that he part that, that he gets his fifty-two thousand dollars back, the thirty thousand dollar in rehab, and then he's able to even pull out more money if he wants to with a um, line of credit. <laughs> so we ended up selling it for. We just closed on it two two days, or I'm sorry, last Friday for 185,500. Wow. So so the net on that, what was the do you remember what the net was? It sounds like it's around greater than 60. It's around 60. Okay. So yeah, but uh, what what um I wasn't sold on that house when uh and going back to uh, you know me doing my own research and thinking that I know uh, that I knew what I was looking for. Uh, I remember that I wasn't quite sold on the house um, and, uh, you know, Christine had to convince me on that one a little bit um, and, you know, ended up, uh, you know, now she, she knows that I, I now refer to houses as the church street house. Find me, find, find me five church streets, find me seven church streets. That's what we refer to it because it just, it just, uh, it ended up being a, a, a great, uh, a great return on, on investment. So, yeah. yeah. That was, that was interesting, guys. I want to interject here. Um, so in the relationship, you know, Benny's sort he's the visionary and Christine is the implementer. OK, and every every good business relationship has those two primary roles. And sometimes 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 you have to morph into one or the other. Right. So in this relationship, Christine is the one who actually at the end of the day says, Yes or no, like Benny will say, I want this or I want that. But I'm here to tell you, I know Christine has veto power. So, so Benny, on average, how many times would you say Christine says no versus every time she says yes on a deal? That's eight, that's probably 18 to two. 18 <laughs> to one. So, um, and um, yeah, I would, um, I would definitely. It's easy to get surrounded by people by yes people, mm -hmm. uh, but you know they they don't they don't um, they don't they don't make you grow. Uh, so uh, in this case, yep. Uh oh, I think we just lost him. Um, so Christine, while Betty's anyway, oh well, there you are. I would say that at eighteen to two, she uh, I, I get a lot of notes, and I'm used to that by now, and and I'm okay with that because. I would, be, I would definitely worry about uh, if she was saying yes to every deal that we would be looking at. Uh, I think that maybe if that had been the case, uh, I, I probably would have done a couple of deals with her and that would have been it. 
um, just because, you know, it's um, as a businessman, I, I own other the restaurants that I was telling you about earlier. So uh, I, I, uh, I have I have a few yes people and a, and, and, and a couple no people. And the, the guys that challenge me are the ones that actually make uh, the operation grow. So um, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm very much uh, okay with her. Yeah, this is, you know, it's funny guys. This is like, I'm watching Hollywood squares yeah, and yeah. there he is. <laughs> okay. Hey Betty, so yeah, we lost your audio there for a second, but guys, what's really important here is please write this down. You just heard it right from the investor's mouth directly. Agents who always say yes generally have a short-lived relationship with their client when it comes to investing. The key to Christine's success is um, she values the relationship more than the one commission that she's working on at the time. So at the end of the day, sometimes it's hard. I mean, I'm telling you, I've, 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 I've done this my, my entire half of my adult, adult life. Um, it's a game of patience, but it pays off in spades. I mean, so Christine, can you can you elaborate on that a little bit? In other words, um, when you guys are out looking at properties, um, sometimes it's a slam dunk. I've been out there before. It's like holy mackerel, let's get this thing today. And other times, it, you know, you got to like look at all the what if scenarios. But um, in your in your mind, what's going on? when you make that ultimate veto, when you use your veto power to say yes or no, is it is it the neighborhood? Is it the, on the rentals, is it the income versus the cost basis? On the flips, is it the, the ARV versus the, the purchase price? Or kind of fill us in there if you, because these, all these, everybody on this call tonight are all investor agents on the team. Some have been at it for a while and some are brand new. But regardless, I want everybody here to really take this in and it's a different learning experience but it's, it's behavioral learning and it's more important than the tactical practical stuff. I can teach you everything there is to know about analyzing properties and negotiating, but the relationship is a behavioral science. Okay. So, and Christine, so would you mind elaborating on that a little bit and uh, like give maybe an example, what goes through your mind and uh, how you, what drives you to say yes or no, you know? Sure. Um, I mean, obviously I want to hear, hear this. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I'm looking at, you know, let's say Benny, even if he sends me something over the phone or, you know, every morning I wake up and I've got some homework to do um, or before I go to bed, I've got some homework to do. I'm looking at the properties he's sending me and, and he's got his own way of evaluating properties. Okay. He, he's looking for the, he knows how to, to get the money that he wants out of the property. If he thinks he can get money out of the property, he sends it to me. And then I, then I start looking at the actual physicality again, like, just like Gary said, the neighborhood, you know, I, I mean, everybody knows their, you know, neighborhood, you know, I, I don't know every neighborhood, but I know the towns, you know, and I know I keep my finger on the pulse of what's coming, the big projects where the big, um, you know, next new hit, like little town is uh, up and coming. And so, you know, neighborhood's important. Then I look at the house, okay? I wanna make sure that it meets, it's gonna capture the attention of a lot of buyers, not just one unique buyer, not just the person that's gonna be maybe a temporary employee, but I look at the house, I wanna see if it has good bones. I typically don't like Benny or any any of my investors or I wouldn't buy this myself. I don't like to buy houses that have a lot of steps going up because not only do I worry about, um, you know, it, it, it eliminates a lot of buyers, right? First time home buyers with a bunch of kids carrying stuff up and down steps, toys, groceries, strollers, diaper bags, whatever, <laughs> grandmothers that are going to see their, you know, first time home buyer and their family, you know, they can't go for birthday parties. Grandma can't make it up the steps. But as far as protecting Benny's money, I don't want anybody falling down and suing him. So I, I look for like an easy way to in, in, get in and get out of the house. And if I can have a basement that has a way to get out of the basement from not just a walk in, a walk up, but a walk out, but that's not always the case for some of these lower price properties. But then, then I look for the 
you know, right now everything, most people want to have an open floor plan, right? So can, can I sort of do that in the house that I'm looking at, you know, when we rehab the pro the project? I mean, is it going to appeal to, you know, a, a mass of people? And then I try to get at least three to four bedrooms because, you know, we want, and we also always want to try to add a bathroom because adding the bedrooms and bathrooms always seem to increase his appraisal um, whenever we have the appraiser come out. So I look for a way for these people, if it's a renter, to enjoy their space outside. You know, if there's a deck, or can we add a deck? Can we add some sort of outside enjoyment for the tenant? I look for parking on off-street parking is ideal. I mean, I really don't want them buying any properties that have, you know, where the parking is tight. So I'm just looking to appeal to as many buyers as I can. That means if he has to sell, you know, if we have to sell tomorrow, if he has to liquidate, can I sell this property the way it sits? So I try to buy it low. And then I look for the opportunity that if we can rehab it, can we liquidate it if he has to? Yeah. <laughs> And guys, I want to uh, mention something else here. We have agents literally all over the country, coast to coast, half the states, in different types of markets. Uh, so, uh, Pittsburgh is not, P Pittsburgh is probably on the right about average as far as medium home prices go. But there's markets we're in where the average home price is half of that, like 115000 And there's other markets where the average price is over a million. So the numbers we're talking about here, just keep in mind, everything is relative. Like when John Giggy's on, he's from San Francisco, I'm sorry, uh, near the Bay Area, um, okay, East Bay Area, um, and prices there are upwards of a million dollars, okay? So these numbers we're talking about, it's just, you just basically do the extrapolation and apply it to your market. I mean, there's an area called Burlingame on the other side of the Bay, up right close to this part of San Francisco, where, you know, there's an agent there who's looking to join a team, and they're routinely doing sales of $2 million. And those are just average homes, you know, that's the average for the area. So, but the point is you can flip in those areas too. And people always do, you know, that, that, that's, a, that, that's a great area to flip in by the way, San Francisco. So in any case, so back to this, what I want to do now is talk about all the projects. So Benny typically has multiple projects going on. And so the relationship goes beyond traditional investor agent relationship obviously christine's very good at what she does um you know over the years i mean it's just amazing that the progress uh when we when we reconnected last summer she's telling me what she's doing i'm like holy smokes <laughs> and i'm looking at her board and seeing all these transactions and the, the dollar amounts and but in any case the point i'm trying to make here is if you're doing if you got 14 after transaction guys and you got seven listings would you agree you're probably extremely busy yeah now, Benny, remember, is the visionary. He's not out there hammering nails and things like that. He sees every single property he buys, all right? And he talks to the contractors and all that. But as far as coordinating and managing, who do you think takes care of coordinating and managing Benny's projects? Just shout it out and or guess and, or do a chat. Yeah. So, so Benny, does, um, if you could talk about, you don't have to mention dollars and cents, but... Um, what's the other relationship you have, business relationship you have with Christine? In other words, she's, she's doing the real estate stuff, but she's also doing other things like the like the coordinating and managing, right? Yeah, she basically becomes uh, a project manager, uh, which um, as you start to grow, if uh, especially if you have multiple, um, uh, you know, houses that you're working on at the same time, it becomes very important. And I. Um, and she has that eye to to see what, um, especially when it comes to, um, you know, how many bedrooms and how many, uh, what the kitchens should look like, the bathrooms, et cetera. She, um, you know, she's yet to, we're yet, knock on wood, we're yet to have a bad result on, on, on one of those. Um, and I was going to mention that earlier, uh, the houses that she's brought um, to my attention that we've bought, I um, I can't say that I even, you know, it's, it's I haven't even... Uh, I haven't done it again, lost any money or, or, or you know, made a, a little bit of money. They're, they've all been pretty, uh, uh, the first few houses, you know, we started, uh, uh, you know, opening up, forcing smaller amounts of equity, but uh, 
and that's what you know i was a little more hesitant at the time because i didn't really know but um as we got probably to our third one third house those numbers started to get larger uh yeah. and, uh, and the whole time you know to kind of you know kind of uh answering uh gary's question you know, she she has been there uh for a lot of those processes when it comes to the definitely the project managing has been key uh, in this case she has proved that she has that knowledge so i a lot of my decisioning is based on what she what she does you know from buying the, the house that she thinks to taking out those floors that uh you know that are supposed to, that are trendier uh and, and kitchens we concentrate a lot on kitchens and bathrooms probably please um, uh, and, you know, sometimes, you know, she is definitely the one opening the doors for, um, for a lot of these contractors when we're getting uh, quotes. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, just, uh, I would say that uh, to, to, to summarize it, uh, it's, you know, she, she acts as a project manager as well. And she does a good job at it too. Yeah. So, so key point here, guys, is um, I've done that in the past too, and I'll give you another example. So we don't have to mention any particular numbers here, but. I had another agent, former agent of mine, he got to the point where he was getting quite busy and his, his clients would always ask him, hey, man, can you take care of this remodeling project for me? Because you've got different contractors coming and going, but also there's other details. I mean, there's dealing with, you know, the, the usual stuff, appraisers, inspectors, and things like that. But also sometimes there's borough people getting involved, zoning and occupancy people getting involved. And so this other agent named Bill, he would charge his clients $5,000 flat fee per transaction in addition to the commission. It's a separate agreement. It's not commission at all. It's a professional uh, uh, management agreement, okay? And, and he, you, could, you could have lived off that money he was making, okay? So Christine's doing something similar to that. I'm not saying everybody should do that. I just want to let you know that when you, when you open up this part of your business, um, it does open up more channels for revenue generation, like management and like project management and even like property management, which we'll be talking about in the near future for the team. So back to this, uh, Christine, if you wouldn't mind, um, what would you say is the ratio of investor transactions and owner occupant transactions in your business? Because I, I, you, you do both, right? Do both types of transactions? Yes. Okay. You know, I, I wish I would have prepared myself because I thought you're going to ask me something like that, but it, it does seem to be about half. Um, okay. I, I have, and, and I have a, obviously Benny is my number one go-to go investor. I mean, he and I have a great relationship. Um, I talk to Benny every day, sometimes multiple times a day. And um, I don't talk to my other investors as much, but they're not as... Uh, you know, I, I, I don't think that they have as much uh, passion. Passion. They don't have the passion for sure that Benny has. But yeah. I also see Benny, you know, some people are just kind of happy with a little bit, you know, but Benny's not. He, he wants to he wants to soar. I mean, and I want to help get him there and I want to be along for the ride. So, I mean, I, I'm putting the my my hard knocks in. I definitely am. I mean, there's last night I didn't go to sleep till five o'clock in the morning working on a project with, for him, but I knew that it had to get done and I knew he appreciated and he's counting on me, but it's for a much larger project, which I know we're going to be talking about, but yeah. Um, yeah. I, I would say at least half because those people buy from, I just sold with one lady. I, I, I guess I bought with her, I don't know, 13 properties mm -hmm. and she decided to move to West Virginia and I'm selling all 13 of them. And it was just only a couple years. So. Yeah. I just, I tell you guys, the average is four transactions per year per active investor versus an average of one for the lifetime of an owner occupant. And this is why I've always been such a proponent of this. I mean, there's a couple examples where just thir 13 listings from one, client who's moving away, but uh, a couple more things. We're going to move on here. Um, both of them have mentioned the words trust and confidence, right? At least once. And that is absolutely vital. And, um, you know, if, 
the, the way to become confident is to become competent. The way we become confident is to get in the game and swing the bat. And you want to swing the bat with people who are ambitious. You know, Benny, Benny is a patient person. Well, like Christine's going to laugh as soon as I say that. that uh, in other words, he's patient with Christine growing, developing as an investor agent, but he's not, he's not, a, not patient with growing his portfolio. And I mean that in a good way. Benny's the kind of person I like to work with. In fact, I, I, I haven't, I purposely stopped coaching people privately, I think three years ago. And Christine approached me about Benny and I met him and we did an interview, talked a few times and I said, I'll do it. For one reason, he wants to fly with the eagles, soar with the eagles instead of crawling on the ground with the chickens. It's an old saying. And that's the way I live my life too. I, I don't want to, crawling around with chickens, I want to score with the eagles, okay? Um, and when you hang around people who do that, there's a natural collaboration that occurs. And so one of those things that is occurring is Benny's now working on a much bigger project, going from duplexes and fourplexes and flipping rooms to a big one. So, so let's take a few minutes and talk about that. And then I want to open up the floor to questions. So um, if we could, Benny, talk, tell us about the, the seminary and I think for I remember, remember Christine first introduced you to you and you, you said no, uh, but now here we are, um, you know, maybe close to a year later actually working on it. But if you, so if you wouldn't mind, give us a little background there and I'll catch it up, catch us up. To um, she has to sell me in a few properties and this was definitely one of them. Uh, a monastery, um, I think it housed monks or friars. And it had a, a church. So it's basically a church with a, an access that has, um, I think, uh, like 20, 20 beds. So it just made sense to do, because one, one of the type of tenants that I have is an Airbnb guy. So I buy a, a properties and I uh, lease them. I rent them to a guy that does Airbnb. Uh, I like the Airbnb guy because uh, he never calls me. He always, because it's a business. He's basically running an enterprise out of the, the my space, my, my property. So, you know, it's somewhat like a commercial lease. So uh, when I, uh, when we saw the monastery, again, she had to sell me on it because of the location of where it is in, in the city of Pittsburgh or just outside of that, um, it, it, it made sense. It, it's good access to roads. Uh, several things make the building a, a good uh, uh, investment. and. Um, but again, she had to sell me on it. And um, and uh, we went back and forth a couple of times. And eventually uh, I did a little bit of research with my uh, Airbnb guy and uh, he loved it. I brought him in and he loved it. And then we decided to pull the trigger on it. And, you know, it's been, and now, you know, we're working on getting it. Uh, it's under contract right now, but we haven't been able to close yet. So, um, but again, it, that was one of those properties that uh, kind of uh, back to what she was saying that, um, you know, she's always looking for the location, the, the bones of the building, um, uh, the surroundings. You know, this area is uh, one of the up-and-coming areas uh, in, in Pittsburgh, and um, and I definitely agree with that. So, um, it's um, you know, I, I, I do rely a lot on what she says and the knowledge and, 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 and basically, uh, you know, what she knows around, around the real estate, uh, the real estate world, so. Yeah. Now, would, would you say this move um, is a big move, but do you feel like you're prepared for it because of all the experience you've got so far versus having like doing this right out of the gate, you know? Oh, um, yeah, I, um, I wouldn't have done this deal right out of the right out of the gate because it was bigger. I think it's uh, either 20 to 20 between 20,000 square feet, maybe 25. Mm -hmm. uh, and so yes, uh, it's. Uh, I definitely feel more, much more comfortable doing this kind of deal now because of uh, all the other deals we've done. Um, so, uh, and I definitely have it clear in my head of what what I'm what I'm going to do there. Um, but yeah, it's it's been. Uh, she has brought me a lot of um, data to to back up uh, the decision of um, why we should buy this building. So. Um, okay. So, Christine, um, would you say this has been a giant learning curve for you, this, uh, the seminary, or learning experience, I guess? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm immersing myself in this process. I mean, 
I mean, I, I had a gut. I mean, a lot of times you have a gut hunch that this is the right property. And, and we were looking at, I mean, Benny wanted to, to buy a, a larger project for this Airbnb client that he has. So we're, we're always looking for the higher dollar rents. And this Air, Airbnb client is a super host. And, um, you know, he, he, he's one of the, the clients that the tenants that pays Benny the most. He has a commercial lease with this tenant. But all the other projects, you know, that I, that Benny, like the one that we sold in Ambridge, we're getting higher than average rents. I won't, we're not even buying necessarily in Pittsburgh. He'll bring me these Pittsburgh deals all the time. And I say, well, what can we make rent? We can't make the rent that you're making in these other ancillary areas that are, you know, that have the opportunity to pull in high dollar rent. And this building has the opportunity to pull in high dollar rent. It's close to the casino. It also, there's a new development that's, uh, it's gonna be like an experience destination in Pittsburgh where they're gonna be building hotels and other condos and other types of housing and restaurants and a marina and a Ferris wheel. And it's just gonna be a really cool place right on, right on the river. And we're just like five minutes away from that at this with this building. So I love the location and the building itself, the bones of it, it's a contemporary building, and I know he said it has a church to it. It has a little sanctuary. It's, it's just really a neat building. It has an elevator. You know, for instance, if we needed to rent to older uh, or senior or handicapped people, I mean, I, I'm looking. It, it, it's, a, it's an amazing building. It, I mean, yeah. it has many uses. So, guys, I want to... Hey, Benny. Yeah, go ahead. Benny, real quick... Uh... This is good, all great information. So like uh, this uh, building that you bought, uh, what is it like 20, you said it was like 20 units? 20, what's, the, yep. what's the, what's the, like so. the, rent, the rent differential between what you would get um, on a conventional, you know, rental basis versus using it as an Airbnb. It's gotta be like at least double, right? Or, I mean, I, obviously you've worked that out. I wouldn't uh, use that building yet because we, we haven't done that. But in another scenario that I do already rent to the uh, Airbnb guy, I would say well, I don't do the Airbnb myself. I rent it to someone that does Airbnb. So when it comes to, um, uh, to from the uh, investor landlord uh, side of the situation, uh, the Airbnb guy never calls me. You know, and again, in this uh, in that specific situation, I don't have to worry about uh, bringing in uh, appliances or it's again like a commercial uh, lease. Uh, I worry about the walls and the roof, and that's it. And uh, in that specific case, my rent might be a little lower than what I would be getting um, in rent uh, from a from a from a from another a regular type of uh, tenant. But again, you know, you know, it's it's the peace of mind that I get from the Airbnb guy. Uh, so if I was doing the Airbnb myself, I would definitely think that I could probably do, uh, probably double, if not more, because they have a, a cleaning fee that they charge too. So, but I'm not doing the, the Airbnb myself yet. Yes, you are sort of. Oh, that's well, right. The new building. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not doing it. Uh, yes. Um, uh, uh, I forgot about that one. So, um, um, uh, <laughs> So um, this one we just closed on uh, not very long ago. Um, yeah, those guys, you know, s small little bedrooms, probably, I don't know what, 10 by 15, 10 by 16 feet. Is that about right, Christine, for each bedroom? You know, for Pittsburgh, those guys are paying, what, I think 750, 850, something like that. Uh, it's a mixed use building. You yeah. bought a mixed use building for $70,000. Okay, you guys can do the math. And the downstairs where the retail space is, is there's nothing going on yet. We, we haven't even explored what we want to do there. But upstairs, the woman that owned the building was operating an Airbnb uh, business, you know, one of her properties. And, and she charged $750 a bedroom. And these five guys that are, you know, these temporary employees that all they do is they work, eat and sleep. So they just need a place to crash. They're all sharing one crappy kitchen and one crappy bathroom and for five bedrooms in this upstairs of this mixed use building, Benny is 
uh, bringing in $3,800. Now it's utilities included, but I mean, that's super profitable. Yeah. Hey guys, I'll tell you something else. Um, when Benny first told me about his Airbnb guy, it wasn't that I was skeptical. I just had to see it for myself because if you study Airbnb, the average occupancy is only about 30%. And Benny said, I think my guy's close to 100. And I said, can you have him send me his, basically a sheet? The guy's at 95% occupancy, three times the industry average. So the moral story is Benny's leasing to the Airbnb guy who's then renting it out individually. He's making a ton of money. Benny's getting a flat fee coming in every month. He's got peace of mind and no headaches. And the reality is Benny doesn't have to worry because the guy's got a 95% oxy rate. And his, his uh, ratings, I looked at him, I think over 300 ratings is about as close to five, or five stars as you can possibly get. Um, so some other things about that seminary, guys, and I'm going to open this up to Q&A is uh, Let me just say this about uh, the Airbnb guy, Gary. Um, mm -hmm. um, he, you know, he, they keep those rooms and those properties basically treat them as, as, as hotels, small, uh, yeah. you know, boutique hotels. So they're always kept in good shape, whereas their uh, average rental, you know, they can be they can be really bad. So uh, in this case, uh, you know, those rooms have to always be presentable. So he keeps them in a uh, top notch. Uh, um, state because you know he's he wants to keep his uh uh super host status with airbnb so you know that's yeah. great too so yeah so on the on the building guys one of my favorite philosophies on making decisions is i call it upside potential versus downside risk so when 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 christine first showed me this property i was i was sold instantly in fact if benny wasn't going to buy it i was going to buy it okay so we were down in a place, an area called the South Hills looking at another Airbnb, a potential Airbnb purchase for Benny. It was like 600,000 bucks, but the, the, the upside potential was very slim, right? Very tight. But the downside risk was high because of where it was. Then we looked at the seminary, the upside potential was through the roof, not just because of the dollars, but because of the multiple potential uses, extra strategies going forward. The downside risk was almost non-existent. And it's a beautiful building, brand new elevator, new everything, beautiful landscaping in a great area. There is a challenge that we're going to go through right now. So I'm going to be part of a zoning hearing in two weeks, two weeks, um, because the neighborhood's afraid of what we're going to do to the property. And they. Uh, long story short is we're going to uh, go in there, we're going to blow their socks off, OK? So, so when you move into the bigger properties, guys, just be aware that there's going to be more work to do. Like Christine said, she was up till five in the morning. Okay, that going way above and beyond the normal call of duty for an agent. Um, but because of this relationship, uh, she, it's worth it for her to do that, obviously, um, for the relationship. And there's the, the extra uh, management fees coming in, too. But in any case, um, uh, you sometimes have to deal with zoning here against occupancies and occupancy changes, um, you know, there's a myriad of things that can happen, but you just, you grow as you, as you increase your size of your purchases, um, your risk threshold grows too, and your, your, what you learn, your, your base of knowledge grows and develops too. You, 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 and you basically develop your intuition and your instinct. I mean, you hear, listen to Christine now, she knows every single property Benny has off the top of her head, and she can, can make decisions quickly because she's been doing it so much. And you can do the same thing. You're going to do the same thing. So what I want you to do right now is you've probably got some questions. So let's go ahead and take some questions. We, uh, we'll, I'll stay on as long as, as long as I can. I know Christine would probably like to get some sleep. <laughs> um, but well, if one thing I wanted to add that, uh, uh, Gary, real quick, is that one of the things that I look for in, uh, in each new deal that we do, each new uh, building property is to for it to have a different uh, issue to be fixed. Something new, something I haven't done in the prior deals so that I learned something new as we go. And it's been very much so. Sometimes we have to deal with the same issue that we had in the previous house or building, plus some new ones. So, and that's what- The light is on. Good job. And that's, and that's what, um, that's one of the things that, I, that I've, tried to do uh if i find a good deal that doesn't have any new issues i'm gonna get it of course but uh 
I definitely look for um, uh, house or I'm not afraid of taking a, uh, a the next risk that, something that I haven't done as long as it doesn't seem huge of course so yeah yeah okay okay guys uh, if you have questions now's the time you've got you've got a perfect example of an investor and an agent relationship right in front of you <laughs> so uh, now's your time to, to uh, get some of the nitty-gritty details you know and by the way, if you wouldn't mind, share what's one big aha you got out of tonight's class from listening to Benny and, and Christina. You can type, you type. What's that? Yeah, you can you can unmute yourself or you can type it in the chat box. Let me check the chat box. I got a question. Yes. Targan. Hello, everyone. Hi. Um so my question is to Christine. Um, my thing is, how did you find your Benny? Like, what was your, your method? I, I feel like I have the software. I have the properties. I don't have the buyers or the investors. And the people I do have are straight garbage or they want the moon and they're just not realistic. So it's like I'm wasting my time. Um, I mean, as far as I've gotten cooked up, people who are investors call themselves investors and they're just angry that I basically am like okay thanks but no thanks because you're really not talking anything that makes sense for us to do with a working relationship so on my end I guess I've had frustration but how did you find your Benny when you know you know the deals or you have the deals accessible for the people out there well, I would say for sure I found Benny through another investor but that investor wasn't a, like a Benny. He was, I mean, it was it, the, I found him through somebody oh, else. Oh. And that guy ended up being pretty successful too. Not to where Benny is, of course, but I didn't say no. You know, I, 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 I took every opportunity to, the guy was trying to find a four, $14,000 house. You know, that's hard to do, but I kept that's at it and I found him the house and I said no to a lot of houses and we finally found one, but I mean, through him, every, every relationship has led me to somebody else, but a lot of the agents in my office, they would never have opened that door for that first guy. Yeah. Cause you never know who you're going to, who it's going to lead to. And I don't know, I I've, I've never lost a customer yet. And, um, but Benny and I, we have this trust and it also is, because of our relationship, it's given me more confidence that when I work with other investors, you know, I, I would say don't give up. I mean, take that, take that guy that you think that is expecting too much or unrealistic and work through it, work through that issue and see maybe, maybe it's your perspective that's not right. Maybe you can learn something. Something I wanted to add to that is that um, I'm trying, I'm, I'm hearing her question and oh, you can't find another venue, of course. <laughs> But uh, uh, just kidding. Um, uh, I would say that a lot of those people are business owners and uh, they're looking for other ways to invest. So um, yeah, but in my case, that's exactly how it was. And you know, talking to a bunch of other type of business people, you know, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go into, you know, uh, buying stock or you know whatever all the different options out there i just uh one of the more prominent guys that i know he always told me uh brick and mortar and dirt so um he says i like to feel it, i like to see it so um uh so that's how i ended up doing that but i would say that a lot of these people will be uh business owners so uh and i would say that also it would almost help you because more than likely they will have some kind of money to invest so yeah. Hey, um, hey, Targan, by the way, set, set up a call with me. I mean, getting the investors is actually the easy part. Getting the properties is the hard part right now, but um, I'm going to give you two, two things to do to attract the right kind of investors. It's very targeted. Um, we, we don't do a lot of broadcast marketing. We, we target specifically um, people based on vocation, things like that. Um, so, and Christine, remember, Christine was one of my agents in my brokerage company years ago, and uh, she started off, you know, you know, brand new, 
And look at her now. I mean, I've you know, ran it. I moved away, and you know, I'd talked to her for years. And we reconnected. I mean, I was I was pleasantly surprised, but she kept saying it was all because of the stuff she she learned in the early days. And sometimes it takes time for it to bear fruit. And I know there's some other veterans on the call here that would attest to that too. I saw a couple of comments coming in. It takes patience, and uh, and it, and sometimes it does. It's um, I mean, you got to remember. I when I talk about things, I make it probably sound easy, but it's only because I've done it. 10,000 times. When I did it the first time, I didn't know what I was doing either. And that was, I've, I have probably made more mistakes than, I'm, than I had successes. But that's when I realized I don't want the no money down on our financing guys. I want to work with business owners. That was a key thing. People that own businesses are usually pretty good with their money and are not afraid to make decisions fast. That was a key critical component. When I seek out people I seek out people I know are in a position to be decisive. They're business owners. They have to be decisive. They can't fool around. You don't have time. So in any case, um, you can identify them doing research. Okay, and I'll show you how to do that. So in fact, we'll do a class just on that, on the, um, not next week, but the, the 17th of May, I'll do a class just on that, that one piece. How do you actually find the right kind of investor. Let me write this down, guys, so I don't, uh, I don't. While you're doing that, Gary, I was going to say, too, that, um, and I'm just saying this because uh, Christine brought this up, but um, well, the first time we went to look at a house, uh, you know, I, I, um, I knew that I didn't have the knowledge to be investing myself, so I needed to rely on someone that had the knowledge. And at that time, this is years and years ago, probably, what did you say earlier, Christine, like eight years ago? Uh, yeah. we, we, we didn't do that deal. I, I, um, and it was probably a good deal out, out there in Mount Lebanon. Uh, so, um, uh, I, I just, I didn't feel the confidence there. Like, like Gary was saying, uh, that was that one time, probably two or three years later, she came back and I could sense that it was a different, uh, a different, uh, you know, set of skills that she was bringing to the table. So, you know, it still took a while for me to get sold on, you know, make, making the first purchase, but uh, you know where we are right now. You know, I bought houses just on whatever she she says. She looks at the house, and she says it's 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 a go. Then it's a go. So uh, you know, the bigger investments, I definitely have to come out and take a look at, of course. But um, um but yeah, the, that's for that's. Well, we just we got start. under contract with uh, six duplexes, and you didn't see one of them. <laughs> I yeah. said you need to buy these. You know, it was a portfolio that was swirling around in my office. I said, give me that. And I said, Benny, we need to write an offer. We need to write an offer today. And he hasn't even seen them yet. <laughs> and, you know, the reason how you get to that is um, obviously a bunch of little deals. I did a lot of little deals at first. And I could see her ethics. I would say that that's one thing that uh, especially, well, younger generations uh, have a struggle with that. Um, I would say, and um, I hope that didn't come across the wrong way. But uh, uh, I, she, I could see her fighting for uh, the better, uh, for a better deal. For you know, uh, there were a lot of things that showed me that she had ethics, and um, you know, uh, as we did more deals, I, I opened up more. And I think I didn't. Did you close one deal for me one time, uh, uh, Christine? Then I give you a, a power of an attorney. You went and did the closing. Yeah. So. That's where we're at now, of course. It, that, that that wasn't built in two weeks, of course, but uh, it's definitely going to um, transpire. You know that those ethics, that uh, that passion, that uh, you know, always told her you had to treat this money like it's your money. So uh, you know, because at the end of the day, if I'm if I get burned, if I get burned to the deal, you know, I'm not gonna do any more deals. I'm not gonna. I may not be able to do any more deals with anyone, but definitely not with her. So, and that's, that hasn't been the case. Like I said, knock on wood, um, you know, we have done, you know, we're, we're going at it strong. Uh, like she said, we just put those, uh, what is that? 11, 12 units, uh, you know, six duplexes uh, uh, on the contract uh, over the weekend. And we lost, we lost two other ones. So, um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Guys, we're, we're gonna start to wrap this up. So if you got questions, Here's your opportunity, or or some more uh, homos. I got there was I got being patient. The relationship is key. Um, 
This is from signing my big observation with Benny and Christina is to be patient with the process development of the relationship. Absolutely. Um, relationships key, it takes time. That, that's, it. that's it, patience and relationship. And if you notice when Christine was last speaking, she used the words trust and confidence again, and then Benny just said it again. I mean, that's the, that's the relationship. That's the business right there, you know? Um, in fact, I just did a Facebook post earlier when I posted last year. I just reposted it and read, go to, go to my, um, go to my Facebook page, just Gary Wilson and look at a post that just came out either in my last one. It would have been this morning or last night. I think it was this morning and it's a long paragraph, but it pretty much spells it out exactly the way this is, this uh, class is, uh, is unfolding in front of you. So, um, okay. If you're, if you're. If you have questions, um, I have one more. Yes. This one's more focused to Benny. Okay. All right. So Benny, um, one thing that I come across with some uh, people who are investors is that they have multiple agents they're working with, basically bringing deals. So with the relationship that you and Christine have, um, how many other agents are you also working with out there to bring out there to bring you deals, or is it more of a she's kind of like your your main person? Um, I have one other guy that I've worked with because of the restaurants, um, for when I was looking for more restaurant space, he's the guy that, uh, that I would, uh, work with cause he's strictly commercial. Uh, but in terms of, uh, uh, investment properties like these, like these? this is just Christine. Yeah. So just her in that case. Christine, you got your hand raised? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that was a way they call that a not a pocket dial, but a pocket hand raise. Um, uh, by the way, we just uh, let's see, Teresa Green. Oh, so uh, Benny or and or Christine, you're willing to, but they're a asking if you would be willing to share your contact information if they have questions that come up later. Of course. Yeah. And no problem at all. You can call it out or type it in the chat box. Um, yeah. Uh, good question, by the way. Target, thank you for the questions too. I appreciate that. So, so actually, Target, this is interesting because I know you started off in commercial and most of this is, is residential, but clearly what Benny's doing now is commercial. But did this help you tonight, Target, getting this insight from uh, as far as that relationship goes from both Benny and Christine? Um, it did. Uh, I, I mean, I know the majority of people that flock to me are all commercial. So that's kind of my thing, trying to really break the ceiling to get into the investor side. Um, but as far as um, investors, I just I keep coming across those who have multiple agents. So you don't really know if you have the loyalty or if they're going to bring the deal that you give them back to their agent that they always that's their go to like a Christine and, um, you know, Benny type relationship. So that skepticism is there. Um, and then also too, just like I said, you know, having the, the harder part already down, but then the part that should be easy, um, is not flowing. It's just trying to figure out how to, you know, break that to be able to get some momentum. So, well, we'll, we'll tell you this, uh, we definitely need to talk. There's the difference is, um, in the mainstream world, in the world at large, most of the relationships are not going to be like Benny and Christine. When I, when I have my, when I was actively producing all of my relationships were like Benny and Christine. And the key thing you want to remember is I did not work with everybody and I did not do broadcast marketing. I, I specifically targeted specific groups of people that I knew I could develop good relationships with. And they were almost all business owners and or professionals like dentists, for example, and I'll give everybody a big hint here. Go online tonight and Google your, find your local dental association, okay? And they usually have an association at the county level, either local or county and then state and a national. Just look at the local level and see if they have a quarterly dinner, okay? And when they do, register yourself as a vendor and pay the 40 bucks and go to dinner and take somebody with you, okay? Um, when I was teaching around the country, physically traveling all around and flying all around, 
I would go out with my agents, my students, and take them to the dinners. And I would say, okay, Targan, you're going to be the one walking around, shaking hands, introducing yourself, and don't try to sell anything. Don't even try to sell yourself. Just meet people and have a good old-fashioned conversation. They'll ask you, what do you do, right? I'm going to be over here sitting with the, with the, the we call them the, the old, um, the old bulls. Usually there's a table where the old farts sit around and they don't really move around much. I'll sit with them. And they're going to ask me, what do I do? And I'll say, well, I'm Gary Wilson. I, I have a trading company. I teach real estate and agents how to work with us. I used to say the word us, work with us real estate investors. And they would say, really? You know, do you have anybody in this area? And I'd say, yeah, there's Target right over there. She's her guy right here in this area. You should meet her. And the last time I did it was with a guy named Cedric Farrell. And he was in Orange County, California. I drove two hours to take him to dinner. At the, at the, this was a chiropractor's dinner in that case. He walked away with nine solid leads, name, phone number, email, personal phone numbers and emails. Okay. Um, so you have to target, you've got to really target your efforts because it, here's what, here's the saying. Everybody remember this or write this down. The transactions you're working on and the, and the clients you're working with are a direct result of the marketing you're doing or the lack thereof. So if you're doing marketing, but you're getting everybody and their, and their, and their uncle and they're not loyal because you're, you're the, the, the marketing is not correct enough. And if you're not doing any marketing at all, then you're definitely at the mercy of the market. But, you know, the whole thing about investors using other agents, that's the majority, right? And if you ask Benny, he'll tell you, since he started working with Christine, he never went anywhere else. He would never take those transactions to another agent. You know, the, the, that you build that trust as a relationship. You got to really, really focus on a relationship and you got to fight through that initial wall, that barrier. Um, and when you do and you get to the other side, it's green pastures, man. You know, I mean, Christine, would you agree it's in the beginning, you probably, you really had to put yourself out there, right? I did, and I actually, um, I feel bad because I don't think I really answered Targan's question before. And I would love to have her exp expertise within the commercial arena, but I, I know what you're talking about. It seems like they're, they are willing to like, not, they're just not loyal. And you have to earn that loyalty and, and basically just, I guess, bring a human approach to it and say, look, I'm hungry. You know, I, I know I can outwork, outperform. I'm going to make you money and give me a chance and don't, you know, just be passionate about it. I, I, I can see that it is uh, that passion in the class for you to ask these couple of questions and I wish you a lot of success. I think you have the professionalism and experience. You just need some, you, sometimes you just have to say, look, just do it. Cause I, that's what I say to Benny. I said, just do it. <laughs> you know, Try funny. me, try me I, and you're not going to regret it. I won't let you down. I, you I can funny. Say I'll tell you guys, I, I know Targan and I know Benny both. Targan was one of my first agents on this team I have. And she's like Benny, as far as having that, that, ambition that vision the ability to um be innovative resourceful and creative and i'm telling you if if you if target if you and benny were in the same area <laughs> it would be that that would be the ideal prototype investor agent relationship you know i'm telling you so um so let me let me uh let me let me elaborate on that a little bit gary i was going to say that uh, with the restaurants I used to have multiple uh, agents helping me find restaurant space. And I think I told you about an example not, not very long ago, Gary, that, uh, you mm -hmm. know, how this guy, how the, the agent was talking to a bunch of my direct competitors. So I, I didn't work with them anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it, it, it's funny that you say that when we started working with uh, Christine, I, uh, I didn't even think about, uh, you know, uh, talking to somebody else. And what I was going to say to, um, the lady was that uh, you have to show the investor, you know, that you're worth, you know, just like Christine said, that you're going to be working, out working, whoever else is there as, as an option. You have to just uh, show them that you that you can do it. And uh, and you know, I remember that uh, uh, a lot of times she would surprise me with some of the stuff that she would do when she was uh, either showing me a house or negotiating or or talking to the uh, to the other agent. Some of the stuff that she would do, uh, uh, you know. You know, it was uh, it, it. She little by little, she gained my 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 comp my my trust. 
Okay. Cool. Okay. Any other questions? Well, you guys are quiet. Oh my gosh. I got my work cut out for me next week. So next week, by the way, we're going to go over questions, common questions that clients ask you, especially at the beginning of a relationship, and common objections. So everybody's homework assignment for next week is to come in the class next week with one question and or one objection that you get on a regular basis. And we're going to handle them right there on the, in the class. Okay. And it's going to be recorded and we get the recording and everything. So, hey guys, could we? Would you mind giving uh, Benny and Christina a hand? It's, this is not like part of their normal day. I mean, Benny doesn't do this. So, oh, Benny loves to do this. Do you guys think Benny did a good job? Like his, yeah. Well, I'm going to make him a stage rock star. That's what he wants to do. So I'm going to make Benny a rock star. But I want to give a big giant hand to Christine because she got like two hours sleep last night, <laughs> right? And still came on to the to the webinar tonight. You know. That's that's a that's an investigation there, man. So, you think she deserves a break? <laughs> Should she get a raise? Should Christine get a raise? <laughs> of course. But he's, but he's like, "What are you doing, Gary?" <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay, guys, so let me check the chat box one more time. And uh, okay, we're getting thank yous. Thank you, guys. You're very welcome. Um, this is funny. Alexandra says, it's like when you're dating, then things get serious until you find out that person wants to commit. <laughs> Alexandra. Hey, Alexandra, that was a great call today, too, by the way. Um, okay, let's see. I think that's it, guys. All right, listen, uh, thank you very much for participating. Thanks, Christine and Betty, for coming on. We really do appreciate it. I know you guys are busy. I know you're, you're busy because you're successful, and this was a big, big gift for us to have you on. And for everybody, God bless you and your families. And uh, have an awesome week, and I will see you next week. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great Bye. night. Thanks, Bye. all. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.